Voxy Earth Modeling allows you to quickly invert your 2D potential field data to give 3D earth models of the subsurface. In this video, you will learn how to compare your inversion results to the measured data. Simplify your interpretation process and iterate on your models efficiently with the tools you'll see in this video. In this example, I've run a simple, unconstrained susceptibility inversion. The voxel you see here is my inversion result displayed with the model mesh. Once we've exported our inversion result into a GeoSoft database and 3D map, we'll have all the information we'll need to compare our results. In the GeoSoft database, by right-clicking the predicted channel exported from the inversion result, I can plot a profile. I will also plot a profile of the measured residual response. By right-clicking in the profile window, I can edit the y-axis options such that both profiles plot with the same scale. Now I will highlight the line header cell and use the page up and page down keys on my keyboard to quickly scroll through the inversion results line by line. We can see that the profiles update in the window as I select different line numbers. The profiles are dynamically linked to the database so that when I click in the profile window, the corresponding cell is highlighted in the database. I can also click and drag along the profile to select a range of cells, then right-click the selection in the database to view statistics. The converse is true as well. I can click in the database and see the respective point on my profile. This method allows me to inspect my inversion results at the surface, line by line, and compare the result to my observed data. Additionally, once my results is displayed into a 3D map, like I have here, I can compare the predicted response to the observed data graphically. When the results are displayed in a 3D map, I should ensure that both the predicted grid and the residual grid use the same color zone file. This way, I can compare apples to apples. Using the Oasis Montage menu, Grid and Image, I'll select Display and then Create Color Zone File. I'll give my zone file a name, select my measurement grid for grid 1, and my predicted grid for grid 2. Accept the other defaults and click OK. The zone file is created and saved to my hard drive. This zone file assigns a color to a particular range of values. When I select this file for both my grids, they'll have the exact same color scheme. To change the color of a grid in my 3D view, I'll select it from the table of contents on the left here, and then select Color Tool. To change the color, I will click the Load from File button. Navigate to where you've saved your zone file, usually in your working directory. Change the file of type to Zone. Highlight the zone file, click Open, and then click OK. I'll repeat these steps for my measured grid as well. I'll turn off my voxel display in the 3D view, and I'm left with the two grids displayed on top of each other. I'll click on the View from Top 
perspective button to see a plan view of my grids. Finally, I can turn the display of the grids on and off to compare them. or adjust the transparency. Alternatively, for a more quantitative approach, I can perform a grid math operation and subtract the grids from each other. To do this, I will first click the grid and image menu and then select grid math. I have an expression here where I calculate the absolute difference between the two grids and output the result as another grid called results absolute difference. The resulting grid is saved to my hard drive and added to my project. I can open it and add a color legend bar. We see that in this example, the absolute difference between my predicted response and the measured response is no more than approximately 60 nanotesla within these regions. You can use grid math to also calculate percent differences or other statistical expressions.